Hey YouTube, Herbal Prepper here, and today I wanted to show you, finally, the first aid kit. Now the reason why I have not shown it to you yet is because I had not found the perfect um, kit to carry around everything, and uh, I've kind of found that now, so I wanted to go ahead and transfer everything over, but before I did, I wanted to show you uh, what it is that I've purchased. Now, what you see here is a universal gun cleaning kit. Now this gun cleaning kit is awesome for about three reasons. Uh, see those elastic bands there? Those are perfect for carrying tincture bottles. Um, and it also has a netting there uh, that is great for carrying around gauze and stuff like that. And the other plus is that these little things here are Velcro, so I can move these around if I wanted to. And then the final plus is um, it's a hard case. So I don't have to worry about my tincture bottles, you know, banging around against each other or um, me throwing this down and, you know, because it's so thin, it breaks. So it's nice and thick and sturdy and it doesn't bend uh, too easy and it's like that on both ends. So, and again, all that can be removed. So I loved it. It was 30 bucks at Bass Pro Shop, which is not too bad of a price for, um, <clears throat> you know, having something to safely carry around my tincture bottles in. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you guys was just this, um, like a baby changing station. Uh, I like it because it's got these bigger um, elastic bands so I can carry around uh, bigger bottles, so like four ounce bottles, which is this size right here, guys. Um, this is a half ounce. This is a one ounce. That right there is a two ounce. Let me just show you real quick. Uh, focus there we go and then that right there is a four ounce and then this is a four ounce um, baby food jar okay so really why I like this is because it folds flat so everything folds up and it opens up completely which is something that you're gonna need because anytime you see an EMT guys they come in they don't have a bag that you you know dig in everything opens up and that makes it uh, really uh, easy to get your hands on everything and really see what it is that you're looking for or might need um, so those of you that are women that carry a purse you know exactly what it's like to try to dig down and around in the corners of your bags looking for something in particular this way everything's open um, it's available to you you can see what you need and then grab it um, also I like this because it's flat right here so this is where you would lay the baby to change which is perfect for if you're in the field and you need to dress a wound um, you really don't have to worry about too much um, you know the field as far as dirt and everything you can throw the wound, person's wound up here so if it's arm or leg or something you can dress the wound I can suture here grab everything out of here that I need my little pockets um, my tinctures things like that um, so my wound spray and everything would go in this one so guys, uh, those are just a few things I wanted to show you. Now, I don't have my travel case here. Um, it's in my truck, and I just don't feel like going and getting it. So uh, the other thing that I would recommend having is like a travel organizer for toiletries. But um, I'm going to go ahead and get into this, guys. I'm going to set the phone down, and hopefully I can get this video going. Okay, so what I'm going to go over now is this list that you see here. But I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. Okay, so... Put that let me see if that helps there we go that's perfect all right so basically guys what I'm showing you now is um, all of the things that I feel that you're gonna possibly need and you can tweak this how you will guys but this is just a basic outline of some things that you're gonna need herbal wise um, for your kit now again uh, depending on your location where you're at uh, even what country in you're in this is all gonna vary so one of the things that I really uh, wanted to get into was just multi-use things you guys know that I'm really big into multi-use so if something has multi-use to it then um, I'm gonna be more likely to carry it around in my bug out bag so let's go ahead and get into this this is the contents inside of an herbal first aid kit so one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to want to have solutions. So this is going to be your washes, your liniments, your singles, and your solvents. Um, your solvent is going to be uh, one of the main things that you're going to 
like make tinctures out of. Um, guys, with solvents, you want to make sure it's something you can take internally as well as spray topically. Um, so liniments are something you would uh, just use on the skin. Solvents, you want to make sure the solvent for the liniment is both can be taken internally and sprayed on the skin. Your solvents are going to just be your singles, guys. These are going to be, or excuse me, your singles are just going to be, you know, single um, herbs or whatever you put in your solvent. Um, liniments can be a complex mixture of herbs, whatever you uh, prefer, you know, for pain or for burns or something of that nature. Your washes, this is going to be like a wound wash or it's going to be something for your eyes. So if you get, you know, uh, dirt or debris in your eyes. You want to have something like maybe an eye bright herb or something like that guys just to kind of wash it out. It's also going to be something that you're going to want to use for um, for females. So you never know if you maybe you have someone in your group that uh, is probably fixing to have a baby soon. You want to have uh, stuff like this you know thinking about the washes that are going to be universal. So just don't think solely about the eyes you know give you an idea there of multiple scenarios that could happen. So the next thing we want to talk about is the herbal powders. Now these are going to be uh, loose herbs that you can powder yourself or you can just go ahead and buy them powdered. These are going to be things that you, you might pack a wound with or um, help prevent infection in a wound or um, even stuff you can take internally, much like activated charcoal here. Now even if you don't carry around an herbal first aid kit, you need to have activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is extremely important because not only can you put it on a topical wound to help prevent infection or to draw out poison, you can also take it internally like for food poisoning and things of that nature. Um, so the loose herb, guys I would say pick about mm, two or three good broad uh, spectrum herbs that you would use for a lot of different things and even carry around. There's these little cases that you can get grinders um, so to speak like uh, salt grinders but you would put you know herb in it and grind it and it would somewhat make the herb into like a powder, maybe not a fine powder, but um, good enough to be considered a powder and the uh, it's going to really expose a lot of surface area on the herb so you can tincture it or you can capsule it or you know whatever, uh, poultices and stuff like that. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is going to be salves or creams. Guys, salves are going to have just a little bit more beeswax in them, creams are going to be more like Neosporin in a way. Um, now, uh, that brings me to the antibiotic, the antiseptic, and the healing qualities, or even antibacterial, things like that, qualities of a cream or a salve. Now, this can be just for minor abrasions, guys. You want to make sure that you don't get a little cut on your finger and the next thing you know, you got to amputate something, okay? So, um, making sure that you're taking care of very small little wounds can, uh, can be a big deal because you don't want to have a small wound turn to a big one. Um, so really, I, like for me, I make something called a yarrow sporin. Um, it's basically just neosporin, just used with yarrow. Yarrow is great for wounds. It's great for colds and flus and stuff like that. So uh, it's one of my main herbs for, uh, for stuff like that. So you can kind of, you know, figure out what herb you have around you or what herb you want to use that's going to kind of be broad spectrum in that aspect and uh, use it. And make sure it's got some healing qualities to it. Something that's going to regenerate the skin, something that's going to heal the skin, um, maybe some comfrey, as long as you're not putting it on a real deep wound or, um, you know, because that's a knitting herb, so it's going to contact healer. Uh, so some calendula, calendula or something like that, guys. Okay, on to the next one. This is going to be your herbs for your pain or shock, healing, antibiotic uh, herbs, like a broad spectrum antibiotic, immune system, UTI, liver, kidneys, and the lymphatic system as, long, as well as the, this looks like an O, but it's a digestive tract or digestive system. Okay, so I'm going to kind of briefly go through this really quick. The great thing about these here, and the great thing about herbs, guys, is in general, is you'll find that a lot of these will kind of coexist with each other. So UTI and the kidneys, and then you'll have the digestive tract immune system, lymphatic system, and the kidneys with the healing antibiotic, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so let me give you an example. Something for pain, uh, it's going to be just real quick, very easy to find. Willow tree, it's going to be something for pain. Your herbs that you're going to use for shock are going to be herbs like our nervines that are going to kind of calm a, a person down. Um, it, it can be anything from like a mild shock all the way up to something a little bit more like a panic attack. So, you know, passion flower. Um, and you can even have things that are going to be more sedative 
sedative so valerian roots and stuff like that so it just depends on your action that you're trying to get and you know of course each person is going to you know vary with how they accept herbs and their body wise um so healing you're going to have things again like the antibiotic antiseptic uh, this can be topically this can be internally um, if you have a lot of irritation uh, so scratching a wound and then keep scratching it it's going to take longer to heal. So make sure you have those healing herbs, things that are going to coat the mucous membranes. You can use this digestive tract, you can use the respiratory system. All very good guys. Uh, these are going to be things um, like slippery elm and stuff like that. Okay so antibiotic. Now this is one that is kind of you know everyone says okay echinacea, uh, elderberry maybe even for the viral type system it's not necessarily an antibiotic but it's a viral uh, you know uh, rabbit tobacco is viral um, but an actual antibiotic a broad spectrum antibiotic that I personally love is garlic you can use onion as well uh, onions probably gonna be something you're gonna find in the wild a little bit easier but guys what I'll do is I'll take out my garlic in the bulb and I'll put it put a fresh one back in my bag and I'll take it out and I have to do this often but it's worth it to me in case I need it because garlic is so powerful and it could be used for a bazillion different things. Okay the immune system guys this is this is very important make sure you keep your immune system strong so anything that's going to support the immune system uh, such as viral, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial uh, herbs, any herbs that's going to boost the immune system help the body deal with stress which is also going to help with shock so um, uh, there's a ton of herbs out there that help in that aspect. Ashwan, ashwagandha, excuse me, guys, uh, is a very popular one. Uh, much like some modern medicine, like Ultrams, guys, they actually lower the body's ability to handle stress, which is eventually going to cause a seizure. Or a se so people that don't have seizures can actually have seizures while being on Ultrams because it lowers the body's ability to handle stress. There are herbs that will up the body's ability to handle stress, so you're more calm in a stress-like scenario. The next one's going to be um, UTIs, guys. Again, this is very important because a UTI can turn to a bladder problem, from a bladder problem to a kidney problem, from kidney problem to the blood and death. So make sure you have things like yarrow, uh, you want to have things like goldenrod, uva ursi, stuff like that in there. Um, so your livers and your ki your liver and your kidneys they kind of go together. Um, you want to make sure they're detoxed. You want to make sure you're keeping everything moving and and going. No stagnant blood, no stagnant bile, no stagnant pooling of anything, um, because the way the lymphatic system works is it drains and what it'll do is it'll drain to the bloodstream. The bloodstream goes all the way through these very popular organs here that we overlook a lot of times. So kidney, liver. So that's going to be your burdocks. That's going to be or your burdock, your thistles. Um, those are going to be very important here. Again, the lymphatic system, excuse me, let me take a breath. The, uh, the spleen is actually a very important part of the lymphatic system. Again, your burdock, you're going to have things like poke root. Now, I know poke root has a bad name or poke salad berries, guys, but if you know how to properly use it, you don't have to worry about the toxicity of it. Now, like I said, there are many herbs that are, uh, very very useful in many different ways uh, but poke is a very good very good herb um, it was used and still is a lot throughout the Appalachian Mountains just like ginseng so it's very important and it's often overlooked just due to its toxicity level uh, if you don't know what you're doing yes you can cause toxicity buildup um, but if you know what you're doing then it's a great lymphatic herb along with uh, cross vine which is great for the adrenals um, also, there's one that is called Ebony Spleenwort, guys. I have not went over that one on my uh, video, but it is a very popular one here in the South that's used for a, the spleen and keeping the drainage and everything, uh, which is a part of the lymphatic system. And the next one would be the digestive tract, guys. Make sure you have the digestive tract covered. So, again, all of these will help with that. Uh, but probiotics, carry those around, guys. Now, I'm going to quickly go into this. This is going to be your pads, your wraps, your tape, your utensils. So, your knives, your clippers to cut, you know, branches off. You want to have more than just your, your uh, knife. Your needles, uh, your scissors, your bottles, uh, medical travel organizer, which is basically what this is, guys. You want to have, you know, maybe two or three of those so they fold up flat and they fold back up flat and they put in your bag. 
Um, so medical travel organizer, your herb book. Guys, you're not going to remember all this. I don't care how long you've been an herbalist. Maybe something goes wrong. Maybe uh, you're in shock or maybe you're hurt. You want to also have a way for other people to help you. They need to be able to flip open a book and uh, maybe look for something for pain, herbs for pain, and then look in your kit here and pull that out because it's labeled and then give it to you. Uh, enemas. Guys, I started not even put enemas in the entire video, but they're very important. They're overlooked a lot of times, guys, um, and you might, you might as well go ahead and carry something for um, or making uh, the, the, the um, enema and carrying it with you, whether it be a bottle or a bag, because you don't want to make a field enema. That I promise you. Um, if you are in my group, I've done told all the guys, you're in my group, something goes wrong and uh, you need immediate, um, let's just say immediate uh, attention and I can't immediately figure out the problem, hey, <laughs> you're getting a field enema. Uh, whether it's for dehydration, um, because I might not be able to start an IV on you for whatever reason. So these are very important things and I promise you, you're not gonna, gonna want a field enema. You're gonna wanna rather have a uh, nice, uh, prepared enema already. So whether you carry around a bag or a bottle, guys, make sure you have that. I know it's not something we want to talk about, but it is a secondary, uh, very quick source to get the body hydrated and to get the medicinal properties of herbs directly to the source without the body breaking it down. So guys, that's pretty much it. As you can see, all that is really going to come from here and that and maybe a travel kit and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope this quick video, quick rundown will help you. Until next time, hope it's a blessing.